Welcome everybody, you're watching Mr. Fugu Data Science. Today, I will be talking about Gemini AI 1.5 Pro using Google Colab. If you need to reach out, feel free to contact me on my socials in the link in the description below. We will be using free resources today, which are great for prototyping as well as letting us learn. Today, I wanted to discuss a few examples with Gemini because it has capabilities other language models may be lacking currently, such as video and audio extraction, for example. I would like to show a great use case with something that Gemini currently has issues with, parsing video that does not have transcripts or subtitles. This hurdle was accomplished today when I made a workaround that I'll show you in a little bit. But first, we need to get a few things ready. For example, let's go on Google and search for the Gemini API and we'll go on to the site. We need to obtain a API key that we'll use with the Colab notebook. We have three main points that we should consider. The first, let's figure out how to get the API key. Click the blue box indicating to create an API key. Then look below at the checkbox. You can click this, open it up, and you'll see in the middle, it'll say API key. Copy that into your clipboard, and let's open up Google Colab. If you've never used Colab, just go to Google real quick. On the left side of the page, you'll see a key. Click that key. You're going to paste the API key and name it whatever you want. Since we're using the notebook, you can give access so the notebook can call your key. And then the little code that you're going to see below, this is how we're going to call it for use. Now you have this set up, we can proceed to the first example. We should go over relevant information since we're using this API and look at behavior that can help us out. We can use Python, Node.js, Go and REST. If we're uploading files, we need to use the API. Here's the relevant file formats that we can use. Scrolling down, there's token information. You can pause the video as well as any related timestamp information that you may want to process or prompt for. Specifically for best results, one video per prompt. You can use multiple prompts that you can can call in to evaluate the videos. And when you're doing processing for a single video, put the video first, then comma, then your prompt for best results. You can do up to 20 gigs of files per project. And for each file, maximum of two gigs. The files are stored for two days. You can access them, but not download them from the API. You can delete the files, of course. And this is free for all the available regions that the API is available, which is a huge list. I left that in the notebook if you go to the GitHub. Since we're using YouTube videos, the comment tool that you will see is to import PyTube. Unfortunately, no matter what I did, this did not work. I spent an exorbitant amount of time trying to make this work, trying to figure this out, and I came across this. It's called PyTube Fix. This function is from Reddit. It'll be included in my Jupyter notebook with a link in the description below to my GitHub. I highly suggest that you download this and follow along together. I need to fix something here. I'm not connecting to my Google Drive. I will just take the file locally from Colab. Put whatever place your file is in here. I would like to reiterate one more time. This function was from Reddit and it's attached to the Jupyter Notebook from my GitHub. In this case, I'm only interested in the audio from it, which is the MP3. Scrolling down just a little bit, you're going to see the resolution types that we have with some error handling. In this case, we're not interested in the resolution. We just want the audio, but you do have that option depending on what your use case is. So you have three settings for that as well. Each of these functions is the exact same. You have a try accept lock with the YouTube link that's called by the YouTube function from the import. It's printing out the title and your view count and the sanitized file name is cleaning the YouTube title. You have video stream and audio where the video is being filtered by resolution type. You have the audio that's getting extracted and then you have an output where you're down downloading the video and the audio and placing it in the path you provided with the file name. And that's it. The three lines that you're looking at now are inputs for your video link, the download path, and then your audio path. You'll notice the if, lf, and else statements where it deals with resolution quality from high or low, and then your audio, and then it prints out if it's valid or not. Remember, anytime you use a new library, you need a pip install. Since the Colab will do an autocomplete for you, just go on, just go above this code, you'll start doing pip and it'll fill it in for you. All in, in both of these libraries, google.colab, remember from before, this is going to grab the API key that we have stored in mine. I just named it Google Gemini API so it knows what to look for. You always need to do configure for the API. So that's the genai.configure you see, and then call the model that you want. Sub 
code script of 001, is that necessary? You could just do 1.5-pro for this. You'll be fine. We have whatever prompt you want. And then if you look below, it'll be model.generate underscore content. And there's a bracket which holds my prompt and the data that I'm pulling, which is the audio file and then the path with the file name for the MP3. This is a pretty good use case. We took a video, extract the audio, converted that into a text summary. Next, I took the same code, but decided to transcribe this into my own transcript for a video, a video that did not have subtitles, nor did it have a transcript. Let's look at that now. Pause the video, look at the prompt that I did for transcribing the audio. Here's what it looks like for the output. It was great and it worked. Again, this video did not have original transcripts or subtitles. We'll look at another use case where if it's not a YouTube video, how can we do the similar thing? I'm going to show you some code for that. But first, let's look at the GUI version of the Gemini prompt and show you where it's different from the API for the output. Let's look at that as well, because I think it's interesting from what we're going to see, because it's not exactly the same and it's limited. Getting the summarized version using the online GUI was great. I could include timestamps as well. Unfortunately, if I would like to have a transcription, it did not work for either video. And the problem was two things, I think. One, the fact that if Google was entering live to the YouTube channel, it would count as a view, which I think would be an ethical issue and possibly a conflict of interest. And the second thing, it could, could be abused quite easily. And also, it's not streaming your data live from at least the API. It's doing a download and uploading the file, doing the conversions and spitting out a transcript or a summary or whatever else you want. So that's the distinction. And when you get the error message online, it said that it cannot watch the video for you and transcribe it, which also makes sense to what my theory is, even though it's just my theory. So let me show you that real quick. There are two things that I want to discuss. And I also want to show you the code if you don't have a YouTube video, but you still wanted to do the same process. Here's an excerpt illustrating what I've been talking about. It's from Life Hacker in April of this year, 2024. It's expressing what's going on. Maybe this will change in the future, or maybe I'm just doing this all wrong. Who knows? Next, let me show you a little excerpt of code that'll help you if you're not using YouTube videos. It's pretty easy. and You can pause the video to get that as well. Here's two considerations that I have. The first, if you are pulling a video or audio, you have to download it and re-upload it and run your operations. What I would like is to do a streaming process directly from the website. I'm not sure what the protocol is or how you would do that. Anyone in the comments, please let me know and give me some advice. I would appreciate it. The next thing I want to mention is the fix would be the speed. I know there's a parameter where you could say stream equals true, but that wasn't really helping me. If anyone could give some other advice to make this go faster, I would really appreciate it and guide me in the correct way. This is just a prototyping, just a proof of concept at a basic level, but that'd be the conclusion of this video. If you felt it was somewhat useful, consider leaving a like, it'd be appreciated. If you'd like to see future content, consider subscribing. Shameless plug, but I have a buy me a coffee and a Patreon. Have to have to ask. It takes a lot of time to make these videos. You got my socials, feel free to hit me up. See you in the next video. Bye. Run free and dive into the sky. Hear the wind crying out its breath.